me Scotty McClure and we are of course live on Facebook Facebook live broadcasting to you right now globally around the world dinky do a very good evening to you I hope you're well we've a lot to get through tonight so get on and get chit chatting we are live now and it should also be there on your Facebook so if you can see me Send me a little message just to say that you're watching. Uh, William Black's watching and David Hems is watching. Mick Simon's watching. Douglas William Bryce. Alan Gordon. Dinky do to you, Alan. Lovely to hear you. Jonathan Darwin. Tony Sankers. Kevin Malcolm McGregor. Uh, Kilmarnock fan. Kenneth Patterson. Andy Taylor. Evening, Scott. Evening, Andy. Lovely to see you. Joe Hickey's watching. Gordon Ritchie. James Cotters. Paul Goffey Goth. How magic, how magic, Paul Goffy Goff, a very, very, very fine, famous broadcaster there. Thomas Dreghorn, big man, lovely to see you, lovely to see you. Stephanie Lavelle, hello, Scotty. Colin Edwards is watching. Julianne Scott says, hiya, hiya to you, Julianne. Douglas William Bryce, there he is, Richard Frediani. Tony Sankers, Vivian Scotson, Kirsty Jarvis, Kevin Malcolm McGregor says, Good evening, fine sir. And I say, Good evening to you, fine sir. Who else have we got? Um, hello from Steel City, evening Scotty from Wee Rona Roo, Gordon Ritchie, hi Scotty, Jim Clark, Gary Cosgrove, Big DJ Big Gaz, Ewan McIntyre, Rolly Laurie LD Dev is watching from Shetland, ah, Kamau Hakamach, eh? Kenneth Patterson, hello again, Dinky Do, this is better than the X Factor, of course it is, I've said this for years, McClue should be judging the X Factor, you know, I mean, all that experience of music and drama. Robbie McIntyre, Jim Bryce, hello, Rob Dunn, Giuseppe Bachetti, ciao, ciao, Giuseppe. Uh, Tony Sankers there, uh, Stuart Walker, and my goodness me, it's just going up and up and up, guys. Gordon Sterling, hello, and uh, Christopher Anthony Smith, Carlin Matthewman, my goodness, we're getting jammed up here. This is fantastic. If you've just joined us, a very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClue, and we are, of course, live on Facebook just for you, Dinky Doo. We start at 10 o'clock sharp on a Sunday night. This is our third program. I thought we'd do another one just to see how it goes. Hey, Scotty, sorry I'm a bit late. Not at all. Good evening, Scotty. Dinky Doo says Tommy. Uh, Johnny is there. Evening, Scotty, from Glasgow. You sound very uneducated, sir, says Liz Michaels. Well, we haven't heard you yet, doll, I'll tell you. Laurie LD, um, not Shetland, it's Stornoway. So there you are, Rostonavach. Go to Specsavers, Scotty. Oh, doing an advert there, marvellous stuff. Maybe have a word with Specsavers this week. Ian Garty, hello Ian, lovely to see you, of course, from Dundee. Uh, Alan, Clive Hardesty is watching uh, in the northwest there. Hello, Clive. George Raffin, Skint Eastwood is watching. Well, we're all skint, Mr. Eastwood, I'll tell you that. Lovely to hear you there, Gaz Rolly Jones. Uh, what are your thoughts on Velcro? Velcro, I think, is a rip-off, to be quite honest with you. Absolute legend, Scotty. Good evening, sir. Hootsman, Scotty. You're late, Scotty. I've been here since 10 o'clock, says John Jordan. So have I, John Jordan, so don't push your luck. Brian McTaggart, hello, son. Skinty says, Dinky Doo from Leeds. So there's Tony watching in Canvas Lang. Hello, Scotty. I'm from the famous Kyles of Butte. A welcome from the maids of Butte as through the Kyles we steer. And uh, good evening, Scotty. Lovely to see you. You're looking even more handsome, if I may say. Robbie Bean, get the fatties told. They're a disgrace. Well, as you can see, Robbie, I'm, uh, you know, beating the battle with anorexia myself. Uh, Tess Tickler's watching. Nice name, Tess. We like the name, Tess. Terry Taylor. Hi, Scotty, from the Scottish Borders. Hello from the Borders, from Gallas Shields and from Selkirk, the home of the Scottish Bannock. Hi, Scotty, says Mick Clark. Sandy Howden. Scotty, what are we talking about tonight? Now, Sandy was a wee bit petted lip earlier because apparently he came on last week and we didn't get a chance to mention him. Get a debate going. That made me giggle. <laughs> made me giggle too. Uh, are you voting for Honey? Uh, Duncan Cameron from Riverside Music Complex is watching. Hello, Duncan. 
Good afternoon from Arizona, says Heather Fox from Arizona. Hello, Heather, you're out in the desert there, fantastic. Scotty, what happened to that imposter that was trying to take your job? What's on the agenda tonight, Scott Star? I'll tell you all in a minute. Dinky do, Scotty, says Ged Nicoletti. Dinky do, good to see you, Scotty. Come and visit us soon, says Paul Harper. Lovely to hear from you, Paul. Stephanie Lavelle, yes. Um, I remember uh, Stephen Kenyon's watching, so fantastic. Gordon Bennett, hello from Gordon in his club guy, Gordon Bennett. Now, Gordon Bennett, of course, that name, you know when people go, oh, Gordon Bennett. That Gordon Bennett was a very famous uh, racing sponsor. I think he was actually a racing driver. And when his car shot past at speed, people used to go, oh, Gordon Bennett. So there you go. Janice Cross, hello Scotty Dinky Do. Did you watch Still Game on Friday? Yes, I did watch Still Game and it was excellent, of course. But I also posted a pipe band, uh, a pipe band uh, movie this afternoon, a YouTube pipe band, because I thought to myself, Still Game's not the only game in town. We don't want to think that the Scots are all about you know, wiping their backside and getting stuck in the bath and all that. Uh, do the SNP like OAP, says Sandy. Of course they do, Sandy. The SNP like everyone. Uh, Steve says, Dinky do. Ronnie's watching. Mickey Clark, three thumbs up there. Denise Carroll's watching. Leslie Allen. Evening, Scotty, from southern Spain. She's in southern Spain. What we've got to remember, this hour on a, or 45 minutes or whatever it is we've got on a Sunday night is um, global, right? That's the first thing. It's global. And um, still game was superb, says Kenneth Patterson. Yes, it was. Boxers are brief, Scotty, says Robbie Bain. It depends if you're talking about you and me, Robbie. Uh, Michael Boyd's watching. Tess says, good evening, Scotty, from the cultural hub that is Glen Rothes, the single mother's capital of Scotland. Just finished clipping my grand's toenails and soaking her false teeth. Her gums have shrunk. See more. No, no I don't think we're needing any more. <laughs> How goes it, Scotty boys? Says Ronnie Stevenson. Ian Garty, Scot Scotty, I'm sorry I missed you last week. I was in cause. Well, you could have got us in cause, and I mean, that was a good cause, I would say. My dad's named after the jockey, Sir Gordon Richards. Excellent stuff. Freddie Finley, what's your dad's name? Freddie Finley, John Halliday's watching. Hello, John. Dinky do to you. All the people that we like and argy bargy with on Facebook. Now, I hope you got the wee 46 seconds trailer this morning that I did for you. Edward Cadden, gloves on, Scotty. Yes, the gloves are on. The mitts are on, guys. So clean mitts. There we go. Absolutely. Kevin says the SNP don't like everyone, Scotty. Train passengers, for example. Yes, they do. That's terrible. Edward Cadden's watching. If you were a dog and I a cat, what would be our motives, says Gaz Rolly Jones. Oh, <coughs> getting together for a chit-chat, I would think. Do excuse me, folks. I'll just have a wee sip of tea. Can you see this? Somebody said it was the wrong way around the last time. Seize the day. Does that look all right to you? Hmm. Gary Stevenson watching. Gordon says, still game wasn't good, Scotty. I watched uh, Scotland versus Lithuania. Uh, McClure for Scotland manager. Absolutely, I'll get out there. I haven't lost my touch. I can manage a good cross, you know. Uh, Gordon, same as me, says Gordon. You're looking younger than in the picture behind you. Oh, I'm sorry, the picture behind me, there it is, of course. Somebody told me, sit back a bit. So I hope you're not getting too much fizzog. Right, too much for Zog. They said, Scotty, could you could you sit back a wee bit, you know, especially because you're quite large in the pus, that sort of thing. So there you are. Um, Joe, sweaty Joe. Well, we won't mention where he's sweaty. Uh, you haven't aged in the last 20 years, Scotty. No, I haven't actually. Are you back on radio? If so, what channel? No, dear. We're on, we're on Facebook. This will absolutely melt radio. Just watch it. I mean, Hopefully it will be in my time that you'll see just how advanced this kind of broadcasting is. McClure has always been ahead of his time. I brought you the talk shows that nobody had ever heard before. Don't be silly, Tony, says Jim. David Steele, no sacking anyone. Enjoy your tea, Scotty, with two kisses. Joe McGowan. <coughs> Lovely to hear from you, Joe. Kieran Fox is watching. Alan Gordon, Scotty for Parliament. Now... <clears throat> Pardon me. I was going to talk to you about that, folks, because a lot of you are very upset over this Brexit thing. And I thought to myself, do you want to back out of it? Do you know, do you want to do a runner on it? Because it would only take a phone call. It would just need somebody with a, 
a good substantial set to make a phone call to the European Parliament and say, look, we, we, we've had a wee think about this and we don't really want to leave the, 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 the single market. Uh, massive profits, fares go up, services go down the pan, a petition of 14,000 telling the Scottish Government enough is enough. This is real travel we're talking about here. Thanks for the friendship, Scotty, 21st century. Uh, 50 people have um, reacted. Oh my goodness, <laughs> dare I ask more? Uh, do not use your heating, Scotty. I don't need my heating. I've got a fine tweed jacket. Do you like the badge, by the way? Can you all see the badge? Now, there you are, Scotty McClue, dinky do. Uh, Scotty, I called you years ago on the radio with a great ding dong man. It was fun, by the way. Keep up the fun and ripping people to bits. Plus, we need Scottish independence too. Yes, absolutely. George Raffin Carpe Diem, The Dead Poets Society, my favourite actor. Oh, that was a brilliant film, The Dead Poets Society. Do you remember at the start when he went round behind the lands and he went, Seize the day. Seize the day. And he told them that all the old rugby players uh, and all the old students and everything in the pictures were dead. And have you ever watched a film of, say, the 1920s, uh, factory workers coming out of factory, they play music, da, da, dee, 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 dee. and they say, there we are, here's the workers, as happy as Larry, coming out of their factory. Right? And you see all these screens, and you think, none of these people will actually be alive now, so we're alive, so we need to get on with it. What's under your hat? Oh, I'll keep that under my hat if you don't mind, Robbie. Scotty, I remember you used to say hi to the guys in the big hoose. Yes, I always did, and I get a lot of um, I get a lot of uh, emails from the guys in the big house saying, "Scotty, you got us through all these late nights in the big hoose," and uh, you know, consequential thinking, guys. I've only met one really bad man in my whole life. He took some money off me, and he's the only bad person I've ever met in my life. So there we are. So even all the people in the big hoose, you may have made a mistake, but consequential thinking, you need to think what you're doing. Who have we got here? Scotty, I don't want Indie Ref 2. Mrs. May will sort everything out. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, Dinky Do used to have a laugh on the radio. Those are the days, says Brian Milsom. John Foster's watching Chris Lavender. Scotty, remember the old days of TFM? Yes, I do. I miss you, Scotty. We love the show. Captain, my captain, says George. Washed says joe joe sweaty whatever he was saying he's actually washed scotty how do you think trump will do tonight i was thinking the other day i was going to stand for the president of the united states of america and i think i may have made a very good president of the united states of america i might not have been popular with some of officialdom because i would have told the truth and not everybody likes the truth. Have you ever seen, I've seen business people, you know, and all the rest of it. And I said, well, what I'm doing, I'll just explain to them what's happened. They say, oh, you can't eat all that. You can't. I said, what, you can't tell the truth. And some people, for some reason, they're in a panic about the truth. Indie F2, yes, 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 says Shug. Jim Clark, well said that man. Anyway, I was telling you. So I was going to stand for president of, a, a, of the United States of America, but they came back to me and said I wasn't an American citizen. So I had to announce to the world that Scotty McClue would not be standing as the president of the United States, and therefore Trump and Hillary Clinton got in. Now, I did a poll the other day, and I actually said on the poll, who would you like as President of the United States? You'll see it on my Twitter. If you go to at Scotty McClue, all one word, you'll, uh, on Twitter, you'll actually see the poll sitting up near the top there. And um, the poll's very interesting because I put, who would you like as President of the United States? Trump, Clinton, or McClue? And most of the votes are for McClue. And I'll tell you another poll we did this week, and this is absolutely Jen up. Go and check it out on Twitter. Um, I put, would you like another referendum for Scottish independence? And it came up something like, I think, 65% yes. There's apparently almost 72% of people in Scotland would like independence now. Because the no voters kind of learned their lesson last year. You know, they kind of learned their lesson. And the Labour Party, of course, was virtually annihilated. Uh, because they wouldn't back independence for Scotland, which is in their roots, if you think about it. Keir Hardy uh, wanted home rule, and of course the uh, the chairman of the Labour Party, Robert Bonteen Cunningham Graham of Gartmore, 
uh, who was a very, very worldly wise man, and his, his pal, the Duke of Montrose at the time, they wanted independence for Scotland. So there you are. Uh, Clinton, um, oh no, Clinton and Trump, pair of bangers, Scotty. Um, Bob De Niro for president, says Jack. Well, there you are. President McClure sounds good, says James Logan. I think so. I think that'd be absolutely fine because, you see, there's no side to me for all my storm and bluster, for all my blow. I'm a very humble man, and that's actually what you're wanting. You're wanting somebody there that can tell it like it is, but has no personal agenda. That's what we want. Uh, now, Brexit. Personally, I feel the change is good. I doubt it will come bad. Folks will still buy each other's goods. Yes, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, Scotty, stop talking rubbish says Sandy Howden. <laughs> he's an old Labour man and of course they're a wee bit sorry because his party's just gone whoosh. They've just gone poof. So there well they've gone poof. Right. <clears throat> Kevin says home rule and independence are not the same thing. Mm, no, but you're getting there Kevin. You know what I mean? There's, it's, a, it's what we call a conversation in politics you'd call that. That's a conversation. Same as the Brexit thing. I mean if they thought oh, well, maybe better not do this. That's a conversation. Uh, I just love how every day is a school day with you, Scotty, says Robbie. Oh, absolutely. Dinky do, Scotty, says Andy McCrory. Julianne Scott, so true, Scotty, so true. Sandy, he is a man who speaks his mind, says Mick Clark. Yes, he's just said to me to stop talking rubbish, as if I would. Never said anything rubbish in my life. Christopher Andy, will Labour now split Scotty? Um, if you're talking Scotland, I would forget it. I mean, now would be a good time for Labour and Scotland to just disband and just say, right, let's just wrap it in now. Because for years and years and years, the SNP and Labour, you could not have got a piece of paper between them. And, uh, and I mean, that's edge on. I mean, I mean, edge on. You couldn't have got a piece of paper between them. But the last 20 years, the SNP have just forged ahead. And you look at how well organised they are, how good they are, how much sense they talk, the quality of their leaders, Alex Salmon, Nicholas Sturgeon, you know, all that sort of thing going on. Look at the other parties who are in total and utter disarray. You know, a complete and utter shambles. And that was another thing that we put on the Twitter poll. Uh, you know, we said that it's virtually Britain as it is at the moment. Remember, there's no country called Britain. So you can't actually be British and be from a country. It's, it's an amalgam of four countries. So you've got that. Now, the whole thing is that um, Britain recently has become a two party state. You've got the Tories and you've got the SNP. And what we were saying to the whole of Britain is, uh, you know, would you like Nicola Sturgeon to run the whole show from Edinburgh? And they're all going, yes, yes, we would. Yes, 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 yes. So there you are. Uh, Angie McMurdo is watching. Dinky do, Angie. Lovely to hear from you, of course. Scotty, what money will you use now? Interesting, Sandy. I would use the pound, I think, pound for pound. If anybody cheeked up to me, then I would say, no, well, we'll go for the Scots pound or the punt, but we'll go one for one, virtually the same as the Irish punt was before the euro came in. But we could probably uh, speak to uh, the EU and use the euro because the euro is almost uh, on a par. It's almost uh, at par, pound for pound. So there you are. SNP not allowed to say Russia in the 1960s. What rubbish are you talking about? Sandy, stop talking rubbish. Right back at your la la. Lorna says, you need to get your radio show back. No, I don't actually need to get my radio show back, Lorna. I'll tell you for why. Because Facebook Live, I know it's, uh, it's sort of moving forward all the time, but we are global. Now, I love local radio. Nobody has spent, I've given my life and most of my, my money to local radio. But local radio is actually, um, you know, not coming up to scratch now. They're owned by a lot of big companies who, uh, you know, you've got maybe two or three big companies that own the lot. And there is uh, virtually no Scottish media now. Uh, although the job of controller at BBC Scotland is up. And I was wondering if you thought I should take that job. So there you are. Uh, then my money's out, says Sandy. Sandy, stop talking nonsense. Shug says, Sandy is a fart. 
Um, the euro's worth more? Well, it was when I changed them yesterday, says Ian. Ian, uh, yes, it will be, but they're just about pound for pound in some bureau, bureau de change. Do you like the French? Je regret, mais je ne parle pas français très vite. Si tu parles donc de monde, peut-être je comprends. Trump worries me, says Kieran. Uh, there's no such thing as a politician that you'd like to go for a pint with. Uh, he's duplicious and uh, deceitful. So there we are. Alan is watching Alan Stitt. Um, Graham's watching. What do you think of Prince Charles? I think a lot of Prince Charles. I think he's a great guy. The Euro changed my money. Yeah, to be quite frank. Stop going so fast, for goodness sake. Stevie McKenzie's watching. It's happening, sir, says Lewis. David Hammond, you're a legend, sir. Local radio is pretend in Scotland now. Douglas Bryce, President McClure, the first president who drank wine up the graveyards. Uh, what's happening to McClue's pies? You should be able to get a McClue's pie. We do a vegetarian lattice slice and a rich chicken sauce. Scotty, you couldn't run a bath. Dinky-doo, sorry for my late arrival. At least the jazz figures are on close scrutiny, the SNP and the credibility. Oh dear. Isabel says, hi Scotty. Uh, what about Trump at Tunbury? He brings a lot to Ayrshire. Yes, he does. Is that your Ayrshire bacon? Um, totally agree with your comments. Do we still have Scottish local radio now? We've got it in name, but you'll find that um, a, a lot of Scottish radio is owned um, by a, a gentleman in Germany. And uh, also a lot of uh, Scottish radio is owned by a gentleman in... Um, in London. <coughs> so there you are. Uh, but I don't think there's hardly any. There's a few little local stations about. Uh, big salad at the BBC. So go and get that job, says George. Uh, yes, I'm trying to think what the salary will be. 150, a couple of tons, that sort of thing. So there you are. Brilliant, Scotty, says Jim. Sandy, the last pub in Scotland is now a money exchange. Listen, Scotland used to have its own stock exchange. We need to get back to that. I'm no political animal, as you know. I'm no great nationalist, but I'm very, 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 very pro-Scotland. And what I will say is that I've seen Scotland be absolutely robbed, all the money going south every weekend. Bye. Thanks, Scots, for all your hard earned. We'll stick it in our pockets and enjoy it down here. No, that shouldn't be happening. 40 billion went south. Director General of the BBC, Scotty, says James. That would suit you. Um, are you making a comeback on live radio? This, guys, is live radio and television. Think about it. This is live radio and television. This is the future. Tell everybody about it. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue live on Facebook every Sunday night at 10 o'clock. This is only our third programme. Right? So we've only had three goes. The first I just pressed the button and everybody was there. So there you are. I think this Facebook live feed trumps anything, Scotty. We're watching from Belgium, Scotty. Salary better than Centre Sound Radio. I set up what's now Central FM Radio in Scotland. Yes, certainly about ten times, I would think. I used to work at Bay Radio in Lancaster. Um, when it was owned by CN, and uh, they only own three stations now. Well said, Scotty McClure. Westminster's been asset, asset stripping Scotland for decades. Been doing it for 309 years. So there you are. Hey, babe, says Jimmy. Hey, babe. More spent per head in Scotland than the rest of the UK, says Kevin. Yes, a few pennies. What happens is we give about £40 billion down to London. They give us back our pocket money. It's like giving all your money to your mum. And she says, here, there, a wee bit for a beer, son. <laughs> Hello, says Alan. Hello. You're bang on the money. Real local radio, Scotty. We need more trannies in Scotland. Yes, indeed. You've got the perfect face for radio. I know. Thank you. Thank you. I've never heard that before. So there we are. Facebook radio. Lol. I've got a question. I hope it won't offend. Do we really need to be in the European Union? I'm asking this as a vapour of 16 months. And under the European Union law, there's no TPD. Uh, tobacco, something, something, see more. Can't see more, darling. Everything's moving so fast. What a legend, says Jamie. Thank you very much, Jamie. Dinky do. Scotland pays more per head, says Nini. Yes, it does. It's not Westminster, it's Westmonster, says Jim. 
Scott Rear Opinions, yes, shout out to James Williamson. Hello, how about a wee wave, says Beth. Beth, darling, a wee wave to you, dinky doo, from Scotty McClue. Nice to have you back, Scotty, dinky doo. I'm going to the conference at the weekend. Now, that will be a conference. I was very, 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 very disappointed in the Tory conference. You know, I mean, years and years and years ago, I had some sympathy with that mob. Uh, I liked Alec Douglas Hume and all these characters. Uh, we're watching from Seattle um, in the USA, enjoying the lesson of the Scottish. Thus, this should be called Tellio. David says, I saw you on Border TV closed down on YouTube last night. That's right, we used to close down Border Television, Grampian Television. When I say closed down, that was just for the night. <laughs> and uh, they didn't like you at TFM, Scotty. Eh? Do they still have dropped bottoms and bounds in Doncaster? No, TFM had to realise that if they cheeked up to me, they wouldn't even get the programme. Very few local radios are truly local now. What's left trying to copy the big boys, same narrow output, future radios and entertainment online, like this, with characters like yourself, Scotty. A shout out for Ross Lip, Dinky Doo, congratulations. This is the most liked video yet. How long are you going to be live for, Scotty? As long as you can stand it, Lana, darling. I don't want to be a nuisance um, because um, last week we were on for an hour and that's maybe too long. Anybody know the Oakland Raiders score? So there we are. Um, how much are the SNP charging charities for stalls at the conference? I don't know, Kevin. All the best that's happened at the Tory conference was the fire drill. <laughs> Sorry, the best thing that happened at the Tory conference was the fire drill. <laughs> and the problems of Scottish radio are just a microcosm of the sad increase in globalisation. Um, no, I don't think so. I think people have made themselves a few quid. I've certainly made people a few quid over the years, and they're off with their money. It's a funny thing, this kind of um, wanting to make money to secure yourself. You know, they don't realise you can't take it with you. So we need a few quid while we're living. Oh, talking of which, if you're feeling flush and you'd like to make a wee donation to all the work of Scotty McClure, um, please feel free to do so. You'll need to go on to www.scotty-mcclure.com, the Scotty McClure website, and there's a PayPal facility there. And people have been so kind and so generous. They've said, son, you'll need to help with your wee bits of equipment at all costs, and we'd be delighted to give you something for the programme because we thoroughly enjoy it and this is only the third program and you've been giving and giving and giving so thank you thank you thank you for your kindness and for your donations at www.scotty-mcclue.com the lovely thing is some people give a pound some people give a dollar um i haven't had euros yet we'll maybe get some euros a five or a tenner i won't tell you what they go up to but it's lovely lovely thank you thank you folks a real help scotland needs its own media i've been saying this for years the herald you know, and the Scotsman and all that, they were all Scottish owned when I was wee. The uh, the Daily Record as well. An hour's not long enough, Scotty. Three or four hours. Let's get some interesting debates going. Uh, it was only back on last week. Okay, will do. Or should I say dinky do, says Alan. Well done, Andy Murray. Very proud. Andy is a Scotsman. Scotland is very proud of Andy. I tip my cap to you, Andy, if you're watching there. Just love your show. Absolutely. Don't bring up my boy no i would rather watch scotty mcclue than the x factor thank you for that the snp got eight thousand. Oh dear sandy and what did the labor party get sandy i won't quote your own figures and stop attacking the nats the people that have the people that have actually brought some sense and some quality to this country give us a shout out says jonathan oh what you like says jamie duff Amanda Jane, Scotty, I'm a vapor of 16 months. You give that up, darling. Give up smoking, vaping, anything at all. Give all that up, guys. Um, you know, I mean, McClure smoked years and years ago. Give it all up. No pockets in a shroud, Scotty, says George. George, you're absolutely right. All these poor souls, well, that's me got money now. I can get away abroad and take it out of the country and put it offshore and dodge the tax. I was thinking about a lot of these people that are tax dodging. 
And when I say tax dodging, it's not necessarily illegal. It's tax avoidance, which is different from tax ev evasion. Tax avoidance and tax evasion. Tax avoidance is not the nicest thing, but it's not actually illegal. But tax evasion is. But the avoidance of taxes, you know, I've got a very, very good... Um, very, very good. No, I will not be doing that, Jonathan. Thank you. Uh, Labour are finished in Scotland. Yes, we know that. Was in stitches there. Is the Turin Shroud genuine? I don't see why not, actually. I think that is absolutely fantastic. Um, Justice. Yes. Uh, who else have we got? Jamie, he answered you, says Lewis. Yes. Hi, says Sinab. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, fight me, Lewis. No, no, certainly not. Uh, people are calling me names, Scotty. Help me out, says Sandy. No, you're all right, Sandy. I'll tuck you under my ox to sun. Take you up the road. Uh, Lewis Woods or what? Uh, so there you go. Now, the thing I was going to say to you about the tax setup, I would tax them at source. I would say, look, I don't care how big you are. If your salary is a million pounds, we will be taking, you know, £400,000 off you at source. So before that million pounds goes in your account, we'll be taking 400,000. Business done. And that's what Scotland should do when it becomes independent. We will have to rebuild our economy. Uh, so there you go. Lots and lots. This is better than watching. Oh, <laughs> I beg your pardon. Uh, the viewers and the listeners, um, if it keeps going, it'll peep your rocket. <laughs> this is fantastic uh, congratulations from facebook thank you very much facebook uh, so we've got so much going on here alan says hi nicola absolutely enjoying the banter on facebook all good fun says john halliday yes john it is it's good quality banter and you can banter back we are interactive it made me laugh last week because somebody said uh, could you not maybe go interactive scotty and I say, it's called facebook it is interactive although a friend of mine who's an engineer was saying to me do you want to take a couple of calls scotty because there would be absolutely no problem with that uh, Scotty is as good as David Hammond. Oh, no, I don't think so. David Hammond, a wonderful, wonderful broadcaster. He used to work with me on a couple of radio stations. Marvelous broadcaster. Have you ever got the chance to hear David Hammond and his 80s show? Have a listen. This guy is so switched on. Uh, you froze there, says Julianne. No, I didn't freeze Julianne. It's just we're uh, obviously buffering a little bit. Um, so... Uh, Scotty, I heard it's HMRC who write the laws on the tax of the government and HMRC workers go into big business to show them how to bypass paying tax. Well, this is called the revolving door. I mean, it's like generals and admirals joining arms companies. Um, opinion, right, very nice. Get the calls going, says Thomas. Yes, so my engineering friend, you won't give me a chance to finish my sentences. My engineering friend was actually saying we could probably take a couple of calls on your phone in. So there we are. You are amazing, says Mirren. Thank you, Mirren. A hero. Yes, thank you, my darling. Sorry, Denise. Uh, opinions on, um, who's that? I can't, I can't actually see that. So there we are, we Rona. I'd be curious to know how many on you would uh, call you back in the day. I did around 1995 when you were Scott FM. Good time. Scott FM was perhaps Scotland's finest radio hour since we had uh, Jimmy Shand on the Scottish Home Service. It really was. It was a fantastic radio station. Um, are you going up against Nicola Sturgeon, says Sainab? No, my dear. I think Nicola Sturgeon is doing a fantastic job. A very, very, very professional lady. It must be the Welsh weather, says Julie. Oh, you're down in Wales, my dear. Get an inspiration, says Ilan. Thank you very, very much for that. And who else have we got? Spreading the word, Scotty. My friends are watching one by one. So there you are. Marvellous. Everybody seems to be coming on to have a wee word with Scotty McClure. Tell us a joke about Ruth Davidson. No, I don't need to. So there we are. She'll tell you one herself. Um, I remember you when you attacked the housewives for being lazy, brilliant, show what a laugh. Well, they weren't doing the high dusting. These are things that have sort of slipped by the wayside. We've got all this supposed feminism uh, going on there. And I think that the feminists are absolutely fine. I've nothing against feminists. As long as, you know, they need a good, strong man to sort them out. And Scotty McClure is your man for that. Uh, no lovely lassie tonight, says Kevin. Tony Cutbacks. 
Uh, I like the matching bonnet and jacket, Scotty. Thank you. Cost me a lot of money, this actually. Wonderful tailor. There you are. Did you check the badge? Wait till I see you and get a wee look at the badge for you. I'll bring you up here. Can you all see that? Oh, how about that? Scotty McClue, dinky do on the badge. There we are. Fantastic. I'll just pop you back there. And, um,. I think Sandy's left, says Alan. Yes, he'll have pushed off, actually. They they don't like, these old labour boys don't like you uh, knocking it back. I shall tell you that. Uh, who else have we got? Um, oh, Scott says, are you listening? Can you ban the fatties from the buses? How would I get work? So, marvellous stuff. Sandy says, no, I'm still here, Alan. Sandy's still here. Good, Sandy. Well done, yes. You've, you've stuck it out there. I'll tell you, I was looking at our politicians, and no disrespect to any of them. I'm sure they're all doing a very good job. But I was thinking to myself the other day, do you remember the greats? You used to be at Renfrew Airport, the old Renfrew Airport when I was younger, and I would see Joe Grimmond, and it was like seeing a film star, a Hollywood film star. You'd go, there's Joe Grimmond, look, it's Joe Grimmond. And I'm going, so it is, oh, wow. And there was a kind of space around them. You didn't run up and, and shout at them and, and all that sort of stuff. So there you go. The Forge Market, Scotty. Yes, absolutely. I advertised for the Forge Market. Marvellous. Lovely, lovely people down there. Um, I need a Scotty McClure badge, says Sylvia. I know, my darling. Uh, go away, Elise, says Madeline. And uh, build the wall, says Mirren. Well, Mirren, if we're going to rebuild Hadrian's Wall, then we should build it south of Yorkshire, well into the Midlands, I would say. Right, yeah. Yeah, I get you, says Jimmy. High dusting's not getting done. It's a very good point, says Michael. You're quite right, Michael. Yes, I agree with you. And um, who else have we got? Dinky Doo. Um, I just woke up with my Chinese all over the place. Missed half the show, says Brian McKinley. Brian, you're a wonderful man, and thank you for all your kindness. Sandy has stamina. No brains, says Jim, but stamina. Back to the old times, like listening to Scotty at night. Now, I, I do, uh, I don't make any apologies for my fizzog, but would you rather that we put up maybe a wee caption, a wee St. Andrew's Saltire flag or something like that, and I just spoke behind the scenes, because we could do that. Uh, I saw and heard Mick McGahey while out for the NHS, Scotty, a great orator, yes. Uh, Mick McGahey was a great auditor. Mick McGahey, cheerio, son, he used to say to the journalists. They'd say, Mr. McGahey, are you going to resign? Cheerio, son. <laughs> I love this guy, says Cameron Thompson. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, rebuild Hadrian's Wall north of Glasgow, says Fred Walton. <laughs> Don't you start cheeking up now, Fred. You sound uh, as if you are ah, Fred, Fred Walton, why, you know. Uh, Craig says, tell us your best joke. I have got so many best jokes, it would be very, very difficult to know which one to tell. So, there we go. And, um, borders are, borders are scars on the face of the planet. Ooh, very profound. An hour isn't enough, says Alan. Here's an interesting question. If there's Scottish independence in our lifetime, although there's been a vote last year, then it's a good idea to stay joined to Europe. I think it is for Scotland. You see, Scotland was the original traders with Europe. We were trading with the Low Countries way back in the 14, 1500s. The Scottish Navy, the Scottish Navy was very, very powerful. The great Michael, I mean, James IV brought down virtually all the, all the forests of Caledonia, all the great old Caledonian forests were brought down to build the great Michael, a massive warship. I love your glasses, says Jamie. Thank you very much. Don't hide your face. Put a flag behind you. The high dusting, I want to pledge, very good, that it's debated seriously in Parliament. If we pledge that, that would be a squish. So there you go. Um, how much for a private session? <laughs> I've actually thought about doing serious broadcast tuition. So there we go. David says, Mrs. May will sort things out. I was thinking today, there's an old Scottish saying, Mer cast a clout till May is out. Perhaps that might take on a different meaning. Adrian's wall needs to be at Brum, and then all the good guys can join us. So there we go. Uh, knowledge is power, says Stefan. Quite right, quite right. Uh, so there we are. Tony Mack, what do you think of this picture of me in a radio studio as a youngster? 
Uh, so there we go. What else have we got? Your jokes are better than the famous Billy Connolly. My video, in the days when you brought out video, make you laugh now, but we brought out a video, and that video outsold Billy Connolly's video. So there you are, the Scotty McGrew video. I remember going along with uh, Bill McMurdo, who was my agent at the time, great famous football agent. If you go onto YouTube, you'll hear an interview with Bill McMurdo. Put in Scotty McGrew interviews Bill McMurdo. And Bill was my agent, and we went along to sign um, videos at John Menzies in Glasgow. And there was this massive, massive, massive queue of people right round the block. And I said to Bill, I said, there must be something on here. He went, what do you mean on? This is for you. This is, they're all waiting for a video. And we outsold Billy Connolly. Could you imagine it? When are you coming to Stevenson? <laughs> Damn it, it's a nudist beach. <laughs> I've always wondered if you had a nude football match, would you have a streaker in a three piece suit? Just a thought. Uh, so they were hi, big man, says Laurie. Trump or Clinton Scotty? Or McClue? Um, I don't know. It's it, the the two cheeks of the same one, really, aren't they? To be quite honest, one. I have your video, Scotty, says Ian Cook. Well done, sir. A rise in hate crime in the UK, Scotty. What's happening in society? Yes, these are very, very stupid people. I don't know if you saw the thing I posted. It's tragic about a wee dog that some boys had seriously, seriously, seriously damaged. They've broken the dog's neck and everything. But the wee soul's recovering. But these boys, I mean, I think a good birching for them would be too good. Uh, so there we go. Uh, Stefan says, great memories. Yes, absolutely, Stefan. Yes, I got a shout out, says Laurie. Yes, you did. You're a clever man, Scotty. Have you ever published anything? I'll tell you what I have done. I've written a thriller. It's not finished yet, but you'll get chapter one on YouTube. It's called Deliver Us From Evil. So go on there onto YouTube. And as I say, thank you. I can see a lot of you are donating here. Very, very kind of you. A pound, a five, and it doesn't actually matter. It's just very, very good of you. So I'm just going to send up a... <laughs> Look at all this. My goodness, we're busy here. Let me just deal with this, folks. I'm just dealing with... Um, I'm dealing with Facebook here. I'm dealing with all sorts. I'm surrounded by top quality um, equipment here. Fantastic. I'll just move myself to the side so I can deal with this. And uh, people are trying to talk to me and everything. Absolutely incredible. What I'm going to do, guys, I'm just going to share that on Facebook right now. And then you can see what's happening. So if you go onto my timeline on Facebook, you'll see the lovely people that are actually donating things. Tremendous. There's so much coming up here. This is wonderful. It's an incredible experience. Um, I know you can't actually see it, but we'll refine the whole broadcast as we go on. Take this as work in progress, guys. You're seeing this in the raw at the moment, but take it as work in progress. If we slow down a bit, how do you donate, says David Hammond. David, you don't need to donate, but you go on to wwwscotty mcluecom and you'll see the PayPal signs at the top. It's absolutely secure, and you will be issued with a receipt. And it helps me to buy uh, wee plugins and microphones and all sorts of stuff. So there we are. Um, where's the likes to donate? You'd need to go on the Scotty McClue website, to be quite honest with you, but you'll see it there. Dinky do, Scotty, says Nikki Croft. Absolutely. Uh, Fred Walton, deliver us from evil. Is that about getting independence, Scotty? Yes, being delivered from evil from Westminster. Uh, so there you are. Bye, sir. Have a good night. Thank you very much, Nicola. Oh, no, says Declan. So there we are. Um... Oh, my goodness, how are you doing? Oh, we're getting all sorts of messages on here. My goodness me. So there we are. Um, <laughs> so there you are. <laughs> Can you remember me and my pal Mary? We called you every week, Scotty. Uh, and I told you I had a cream carpet and a cream suit. And she told you about her son in jail. He was in the big house. <laughs> Gillian says, do you accept gyros, Scotty? No, we do not. This is only if you're feeling flush. You like the idea of broadcasting. All these things cost, and um, it would be tremendous. You know, I mean, I'm spending all my money on it. Um, but if you give it a wee hand out, it would be just terrific. So there you go. But you'll see how to do it on the Scotty McClue website. Scotty, you're a great radio influence and an inspiration for me. Bless you. Tony. It's no problem at all. I love the whole concept of radio. I don't know what it is. I've always loved transmitters. And when I was working down after I left Scott FM, people thought, oh, that's out. he's out of radio. No, not a bit of it. 
It was radio right up until last year. And there's talks going on all the time. There's talks about going on internationally. There's people queuing up to sign up Scotty McClure because he's a huge draw. That's nothing to do with me. I don't think it just happens. I think, to be honest, people are fed up with the so-called slickness of canned entertainment. You know, you might um, buy a big television package from one of the big providers. You look through it, you flick, 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 flick. You think, do you know, there's nothing I want to see on here. And then an old guy in a bunnet's having a blather with you on Facebook. And you think, do you know, this is how I like to receive my media. So there you are. Uh, right, here we got Lord Reith, says Robbie. Yes, Lord Reith, my late Labrador. We have Clyde now, who's 10 years old tomorrow. And he took a wee stroke about five years ago. He took a fibrocartilaginous embolism. And one of his paws, I thought I was going to lose on this, a lovely wee sporting Labrador. And he fought back. And um, he's got, he, he walks a bit like uh, the late Douglas Bader, the fighter pilot, who'd lost his legs in a flying accident in 1928, flying a gamecock, and he's, he went too, too low and his wingtip touched the ground. He was in a terrible smash. You'll see it in the film Reach for the Sky. And Douglas was not phased. And Douglas was the um, chieftain of the Bears Den and Mulgai Highland Games, Sir Douglas Bader. And so was Scotty McClue. And so was Red Rum the Racehorse. So you can work out which was the better looking of us all. Um, radio's not the same as it was, says Stephen. No, it's not, Stephen, actually. It's really just a jukebox with uh, young people putting songs into the computer. Uh, so there we are. Uh, global. No, we're not going about that. Uh, so there we are. You're doing a great job, Scotty. Yes, so I went down to Yorkshire. I've been to Yorkshire twice working on the big radio stations down there. Tremendous fun. Lovely, lovely part of the world. Down to Sheffield, down to Manchester and Lancashire. Ter terrific time. There's Clive Hardesty. Hi, Scotty. It's Clive here. Hi, Clive. We like a good bit of argy bargy. Marvellous, marvellous stuff. Um, so lots and lots of fun on there on Facebook from you guys. Now, let me just check the time because I do not want to overstay my welcome. So I shall see what the time is. Sorry, I'm moving you all about here. You're getting dizzy. Uh, oh, my goodness me. It's, uh, it's uh, what, what is it? 13 minutes to 11. I had to calculate, recalculate that because I've got it in 24-hour time. 13 minutes to 11 o'clock. So we'll have to finish up soon. You must be getting uh, thoroughly fed up. Um, I met my wife on the radio, on the CB radio, so there you go. Dr. Pip's learning lots. How marvellous, Dr. Pip. There we are. And uh, a shout out to Declan, of course. Um, John says, John Tom's the wonderful John Tom, super businessman there, great radio broadcaster, just back home and logged in. Dinky do to you, John. Works very, very hard uh, for a lot of uh, very, very good causes. Uh, I found a 50 pence piece down the side of the couch. Do you want it, says John. <laughs> John, up to yourself, really. It really is, but everything's welcome. A pound, a dollar, a fiver, 50,000 quid. It doesn't actually matter. Uh, if you're feeling flush, it's very welcome. It can be put to good use. If you're not feeling flush, do you know, I was so touched, so touched last year. I, I, I got things like... Uh, you know, three pounds and five pounds and ten pounds and stuff like that. And I looked at where the sources of it were. And it's people that maybe have a lot of want going on in their lives. Please, um, you know, don't be splashing out an old McClue just because I'm saying dinky do to you. But if you want to donate towards the broadcast and towards equipment, please Feel free to do so. You can do it on Scotty McClure's website. Uh, I'll sort that out soon, says John. How marvellous. John Tom's a wonderful fellow. Uh, yes, times we don't want to miss the Trumpton debate on the Beeb. It should be a gripping watch. Oh dear, there's been so many complaints. I wondered, I was asked um, by listeners and viewers if I wanted to uh, consider chairing the Thursday night one, the question time debate. So there we are. Well, you'd only get the truth from me, I'll tell you that, for nothing. And these folk would get away with zero. Right, uh, when are you live again, says Steve? Next Sunday, 10 o'clock, Steve. We thought we'd ration it, because you're going to get too much of a good thing. Um, Scotty, I uh, would like you to be my adopted radio father. I would be greatly honoured. How marvellous. 
There we are. Mark is on from Manchester. It was sometime late in 1997. I started listening to the great Scott on Century FM. It kept me sane at night when I was working as a night cashier in a garage alone. Always good to hear from you, Scotty. Good to hear from you, Mark. You're a very, very clever man. Um, and who else have we got? If you can manage a good night to Amy and Rebecca, that would be good. But don't worry if you can't. John, I'm not worried. If I can't manage it, I can't manage it. But I would like to say good night to Amy and Rebecca. But if I can't manage it, I'll let you know. Uh, Scotty, you look so smart, says Declan. Thank you, Declan. Very kind of you. Aldo's watching. Hi, Aldo. Uh, Scotty, would you like to be the Secretary General of the new Scottish Broadcasting Corporation? I would love it. <laughs> and with almost 40 years experience of television and radio, of music and drama, I would know exactly what I was doing, I can tell you that. So Scotty, when can we have a dab conversation, says Clive Hardesty. Are you talking about dabbing? A dabbing, like, like am I dabbing? Or are you talking about digital audio broadcasting, Clive? Good show, Scotty. Back next week, says Sandy. Sandy, thank you. It's very, very good of you. I know you're a decent soul. Just a bit misguided politically. Bang on comment over the sickness of radio today. Controllers, controllers think they know what the people want. A lot like uh, a certain period in Germany's years. Now, a lot of people um, don't know what audiences want. I know what audiences want because I've always worked with audiences, whether it's the theatre, whether it's talking live to you on the radio, television, Facebook Live on a Sunday night, dinky-doo, Scotty McClue, just for you. Giuseppe says, excellent show tonight, Scotty. Mwah. Always a pleasure to tune in. Thank you, Giuseppe. It's just like Mama used to broadcast, eh? Uh, Kevin says, I've sent you 50 quid. Spend it wisely and keep entertaining. Kevin, yeah, you'd better be joking. Uh, excellent show tonight, Scotty. Always a pleasure to tune in. Dabbing is a term in the printing trade, says Sandy. I know that because I used to work in newspapers and you had the inkies. And the inkies were your hot metal guys and all that. They could read upside down. And as a journalist, if you had to change a story, you had to dash down to the inkies and they would shout with the noise of the printing press going, ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. What do you want, son? And you say, I need to make a change. Okay, whereabouts? Right. And they could read upside down and they would go and lift the letters uh, and change them. So there we are. Uh, Jen says, I got in late. I wasn't listening at 10 sharp. I'll try to be in time next week. You'd better, Jen. Two wee kisses. Though, so I'll let you off with that. And uh, all right, mate, says Declan. Uh, dinky do, I say. Keep your messages coming. We have a lot to talk about. We haven't even uh, scratched the surface on Brexit, though. I'd love to see you do a live two hour streaming on YouTube, says Amanda. Well, there we are. That might happen. Now, guys, can I tell you a little bit about social media? Get on to Scotty McClue on YouTube. You'll see all the links on Facebook there if you look back. They've obviously been mobbed by all the messages tonight. But if you look back, you'll see the links on Facebook. And uh, do that, please. It's very, very important. Um, and uh, um, check out all the movies. There's about ooh, 128 or something like that. We posted one last night. Mentions the, the word knickers in it. I've said it now. I've said it live on Facebook. Anyway, um, you know, have a listen to that one. So, Scotty, I wear a cap like yours on stage. Last week I said it's for Scotty when we started our set. And a member of the audience remembered Red Rose Radio and made me feel very, very happy. 25 years ago, Scotty McClue live on Red Rose Radio. Scott, uh, Scotty, what about Andy Murray winning the China Open? Oh, it's fantastic, Martin. It is wonderful. A great Scott. Um, have you noticed that uh, down south they call him British? because they don't want the name Scotland mentioned too much. Um, we've uh, patched for a third time, heartbroken to say the least. Yeah, so there you are. Um, what's that? I'll be tuning into the YouTube, says Robbie. Excellent. This has been fabulous and inspiring, says Kieran. What you've managed to do here. Aha, ha, 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 says Harry. Kevin says, Brexit means Brexit. It's a made-up word. Brexit, well, for Brexit, I had uh, sausage, egg, and, uh, and beans. What about that? That's my Brexit. Uh, that's what I call a full Scottish Brexit. Um, no, I think probably they'll get cold feet and they'll decide to chuck it. It's only a phone call. I'll make the phone call. 
if uh, if Nicola wants to say, Scotty, would you make the phone call to uh, the EU? Yes, of course I would. That's not a problem. Uh, so there you are. Right. Thanks. I'm not kidding. Uh, I'll actually get a tiffin tomorrow. So there we are. You are my favourite. Ah, thank you very much. Uh, Colin is watching. He's just joined us. Thank you for that, Colin. This is tremendous. Now, guys, do me a big favour. Every single one of you, share and share and share the video. The video of this will be ready just after we go off air. And um, as soon as that happens, get sharing that and keep sharing it and sharing it and sharing it and sharing it all week. And don't turn around and say, oh, I'm not bothered with that. There's so much media around. This is different. This is us audience building. We're building up a massive, massive audience so that all of us can get the best out of this. If they'd had a phone in like this, I couldn't understand the radio stations. The night of 9-11, most of the idiot controllers in this country pulled their phone in program. They said, oh, no, 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 not after something like 9-11. Oh, no, 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 no phone in. Fortunately, I had a top programmer and we had a chat. He said, no, Scotty, you go on and you'll handle that. And we went on and we did that. Uh, so there we are. Can you make a phone call live on the show? We went on, we did it, and what a fantastic show. And we finished the show, we played the American National Anthem and the British National Anthem. And we had a lady phone to say her son was due to have a meeting at the Twin Towers at 9 o'clock that morning. And his tube had got stuck in the way into New York. So they had been stopped because of what happened, obviously. Um, and that's how close it was. And it was an incredible program. There should have been a phone in on during the whole Brexit, Brexit thing. So some radio station should have got in touch and said, Scotty, would you do the phone in, please, for Brexit? Because you can handle the big political issues, although you're not a political animal, of course. So there we are. Scotty, the sooner we get independence, the better. Cheers, my friend. Have a nice week. So there we are. Um, oh, <laughs> this is absolutely incredible. Uh, don't forget the white pudding, says Clive. England doesn't get this, but we have it in Dumfries. So there you are. <coughs> How marvellous. John, hi. He says, hi. No bother, dinky-do. And uh, a funny song for your ending, says Shug. Do you remember me? I'll tell you a nice one I got recently, and it was, Goodbye, everybody, goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. Of wheat or sane or revoir and a cheerio. Woo! That sort of thing. So that's maybe we'll make that a song. Um, so there we're, we're talking about 9 11 now. We're talking about dab, uh, all that. 9 11's a day I'd like to forget. I lost a cousin in the World Trade Center. I cry on that tragic day. I'm sorry to hear that, but this just shows you how global we are on this broadcast. Stephen says, Nice job, Scotty. Night, night, la. Um, R.I.P. Roy Williamson says, Shug, you know. Shug, I can't believe um, that you've said that. Roy Williamson was just an absolute hero of mine. Uh, one half of the Corries, Roy Williamson and Ronnie Brown. Used to be the Corry Folk Trio and Paddy Bell, of course. And um, I just worshipped the Corries. And I can remember uh, long before the SNP of Scottish independence was really had, had the, the, the run behind it. In the late 60s and early 70s, I went to Corries concerts. And um, people were coming out going, oh, we, it was a wee bit nationalistic, a wee bit nationalistic. Roy Williamson was the most remarkable man. Roy Williamson went to Gordonston School, a school which I have immense time for. And um, he wrote Flower of Scotland. And Flower of Scotland is actually based on the, the chorus of the Hebrew slaves from the uh, opera Nabucco. And um, if you think about it, it goes, Oh, flower of Scotland, and the Hebrew slaves, love speed your journey, la la la. So that's, uh, that was the origin of it, and Roy and Ronnie toured, and I was listening to them the other night, and it sounds just as fresh, as fresh as the day that the Corries got together, Hwa Wadne Fech for Charlie, and all that sort of sound, the Peabrook, beautiful stuff, the, the, the Heedless Cross, ah. Oh. They, they brought all these marvellous old Scottish songs back together, put them in vogue, and they are just, mm, just fantastic. So, yes, rest in peace, 
um, Roy Williamson, a marvellous, marvellous, lovely man. And Ronnie Brown, Ronnie, if you're watching, um, as far as I know, Ronnie's to the fore, if you're watching, Dinky Doo from Scotty McClure. Uh, Hail Caledonia should be the Scottish national anthem. Hail Caledonia. Uh, marvellous stuff. Um, if I could be president of the United States, says Amanda. Yes, you could, my dear, if you're an American citizen. That's why Scotty couldn't stand. So there we are. Um, marvellous things going on. A lot of people talking about digital audio broadcasting. Right, you lot. What is the time? Let me see again. Sorry, moving you about here. Right, that is it. It's 11 o'clock. You've had more than your whack. Thank you so much to all of you. If you want to make a wee donation, the Scotty McClue website, www.scotty-mcclue.com. If you don't, not a problem either way. To all of you who have donated, I say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It will be very well spent. It will be put to very good use. From me, Scotty McClure, until next week, God willing, weather permitting, when we are live on Facebook again, I say to all of you, have a wonderful week. God bless, good night, and dinky-doo!